Hello everybody! We last spoke about the process of protein creation and regulation of protein creation. However, equally as important is the ability to send proteins to the correct location. This is known as protein trafficking and is a very high yield topic for the USMLE Step 1. This is because dysregulation of this process is associated with disease. In this video we will go over the different mechanisms of protein trafficking that you need to know for the USMLE Step 1. We will also take this opportunity to discuss ISIL disease and its relevant pathophysiology. So what is protein trafficking? Well, once proteins are made, they must be sent to the correct location. This is extremely important and many molecular mechanisms exist to ensure that proteins are sent to the correct destination. Various mechanisms of protein trafficking have been described. However, they are grouped into two general categories. They are those which depend on vesicles, or vesicle mediated trafficking and those which do not depend on vesicles or non vesicle mediated trafficking. Vesicle mediated trafficking is the type of trafficking used by proteins which are made in the endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes. Non vesicle mediated trafficking is the type of trafficking used by proteins which are made in cytosolic ribosomes. It is very important that you are familiar with these mechanisms because essentially all proteins made in the human body undergo one of these two mechanisms. Here we can see a simple flowchart showing all the possible destinations that protein can take. As we said before, there are two general pathways which differ based on whether or not they use vesicles. Proteins made in endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes always use vesicle mediated trafficking. These proteins can go to several destinations, however, regardless of their final destination, they must always pass through the Golgi apparatus. Even proteins that are destined to stay in the endoplasmic reticulum must first go to the Golgi and then be sent back from the Golgi to the endoplasmic reticulum. The Golgi serves as the distribution center for vesicle mediated trafficking. Once in the Golgi, proteins have several options. They can go to the plasma membrane and become a plasma membrane protein. They can go to the plasma membrane and be excreted through a process called exocytosis. They can go to the lysosome. They can stay in the Golgi. Or they can go back to the endoplasmic reticulum. What I want you to know is that vesicular mediated trafficking and generally proteins made in the endoplasmic reticulum can only be sent to one of these five destinations. Now let's talk about proteins made in cytosolic ribosomes. Proteins made in cytosolic ribosomes never enter vesicles and instead have special amino acid sequences which target the protein to its intended destination. These proteins typically stay inside the cell and can either stay in the cytosol and function as a cytosolic protein or they can be targeted to specific organelles such as the mitochondria, the peroxisome, or the nucleus. So what you need to know is that proteins which are destined for the lysosome, Golgi, endoplasmic reticulum, plasma membrane, as well as those proteins which are meant to be secreted are all made in the endoplasmic reticulum ribosome and are trafficked using vesicle mediated traffic. On the other hand, proteins destined for the mitochondria, peroxisome, nucleus, or cytosol are made in cytosolic ribosomes or free floating ribosomes. These proteins never use vesicular mediated trafficking and instead use special amino acid sequences which target the protein to its destination. So how is it that some proteins are made in endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes while others are made in cytosolic ribosomes? Well, translation of every protein starts in cytosolic ribosomes. However, proteins destined for the endoplasmic reticulum have special amino acid sequences which are recognized by proteins that move the ribosome as it translates the new protein into the endoplasmic reticulum. These proteins are called signal recognition particles and are essential for targeting ribosomes and proteins to the endoplasmic reticulum. Without signal recognition particles, 
proteins normally sent to the endoplasmic reticulum would accumulate in the cytosol. Let's take a closer look at this mechanism on the next slide. Normally, mature mRNA leaves the nucleus and finds a cytosolic or free-floating ribosome. Once translation begins and the new protein starts forming, the signal recognition particle, or SRP, recognizes a unique amino acid sequence in the growing polypeptide chain. The SRP binds this amino acid sequence. The SRP molecule then binds a pore in the endoplasmic reticulum membrane and brings the ribosome protein complex into the endoplasmic reticulum, essentially making the ribosome an endoplasmic reticulum ribosome. The rest of the protein is then synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum and the protein becomes part of the endoplasmic reticulum vesicular transport system. Now let's move on and talk about vesicular mediated trafficking. As we said before, vesicular mediated trafficking involves transport between the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, plasma membrane, and lysosome. However, the process of making vesicles and sending them to specific locations requires the use of special proteins which form coats around membranes in order to force the creation of a vesicle. There are three types of these coat proteins. They are called COP1, COP2, and clathrin. As we will soon see, each one of these proteins creates vesicles that go to different places within the cell. Here we can see a simple representation of how vesicles are made with coat proteins. The endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi, and lysosome are all membrane-bound organelles. So in order to create a vesicle, coat proteins bind a portion of the membrane and butt off that piece of membrane in order to create a vesicle. Eventually, this area right here pinches off. The same process occurs in the plasma membrane of cells during endocytosis. Endocytosis is the process that cells use to take in foreign material by creating a vesicle out of the plasma membrane. We will talk more about endocytosis in the next few slides. You need to be familiar with the functions of each of the three main coat proteins. COP1 coated vesicles transport vesicles from the cis Golgi to the endoplasmic reticulum. This is known as retrograde transport. COP2 coated vesicles transport vesicles from the endoplasmic reticulum to the cis Golgi. This is known as enterogated transport. Finally, clathrin coated vesicles transport vesicles from the plasma membrane to the lysosome or from the Golgi to the lysosome. Let's take a look at this process on the next slide. Here we can see a diagram of the main vesicular coat proteins and their associated pathways. COP2 coated vesicles transport proteins from the ER to the cis Golgi. This is known as anterograde transport because proteins are moved from the center of the cell towards the plasma membrane. You may be wondering what is the cis Golgi. The Golgi apparatus has two sides the side that faces the endoplasmic reticulum and the side that faces the plasma membrane. The side that faces the endoplasmic reticulum is known as the cis Golgi, while the side that faces the plasma membrane is known as the trans Golgi. The cis Golgi contains mostly immature proteins that have not yet been modified. These are typically proteins that were just made in the endoplasmic reticulum. The trans Golgi, on the other hand, has mature proteins that are ready to be sent out of the Golgi to their respective destinations. Let's keep talking about coat proteins. The next coat protein that I want to talk about is called COP1. 
COP1 coated vesicles transport proteins from the Golgi back to the endoplasmic reticulum. This is called retrograde transport because proteins are moved away from the plasma membrane and towards the center of the cell. These would be the vesicles which would transport proteins destined for the endoplasmic reticulum. Remember, all proteins made in endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes must be transferred to the Golgi before being sent to their final destination. Now let's talk about clathrin-coated vesicles. Clathrin-coated vesicles typically transport proteins from the Golgi to the lysosome as well as material ingested by the cell to the lysosome. They are essentially the gateway to the lysosome. Some types of cells absorb foreign material by creating vesicles from the plasma membrane through a process called endocytosis. All material absorbed via endocytosis is sent to the lysosome via clathrin coated vesicles. So what you need to know here is that there are three types of coat proteins. COP2 coated vesicles transport proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum to the cis Golgi. COP1 coated vesicles transport proteins from the cis Golgi back to the endoplasmic reticulum. Lastly, clathrin covered vesicles serve as the gateway to the lysosome. They have two general pathways. They can either bring contents from the trans Golgi to the lysosome or they can bring endocytose material from the plasma membrane to the lysosome. So far we have talked about all the different possible destinations that proteins may take as well as the vesicular machinery involved in protein trafficking. But we have not discussed how proteins are identified in order to be sent to the correct location. For example, how does the cell know whether to send a new protein to the lysosome or to the plasma membrane? The answer to this is targeting molecules. Newly made proteins in the endoplasmic reticulum are immediately modified via glycosylation reactions, which are basically the process of adding carbohydrate monomers to specific amino acids in the proteins. Proteins also undergo additional glycosylation reactions in the Golgi. These modifications are essential for both the proper functioning of the final protein as well as targeting the protein to the correct location. There are also other types of reactions which attach different molecules other than carbohydrates to proteins, such as phosphate groups. However, glycosylations are the most common and most relevant. So what you need to know here is that the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus are sites of protein modification. The most common of these protein modifications is glycosylation reactions. However, other types of reactions such as phosphorylations or the addition of phosphate groups also occurs. So as we said before, proteins made in the endoplasmic reticulum have five possible destinations all requiring vesicle mediated transport. That is, they can go back to the endoplasmic reticulum, they can stay in the Golgi, they can go to the lysosome, they can go to the plasma membrane, or they can be excreted via exocytosis. Proteins sent to the plasma membrane can either become part of the plasma membrane as in membrane bound proteins or they can be secreted out of the cell through exocytosis. You need to be familiar with the process of vesicular secretion or exocytosis because it is extremely important in physiology. Once proteins with the appropriate targeting molecules reach the Golgi, they are further modified, matured, and prepared for secretion via exocytosis. Exocytosis is the process by which vesicles fuse with the plasma membrane in order to release their contents into the cell exterior. What you need to know is that there are two pathways of protein secretion constitutive secretion and regulated secretion. In constitutive secretion, vesicles are constantly undergoing exocytosis. In regulated secretion, loaded vesicles are stored in the cytosol until a release signal is received. Usually the signal is an increase in intracellular calcium. Regulated secretion is extremely important in nerve cells because it is the mechanism used for the release of neurotransmitters following action potentials. Another important thing that you need to know is that constitutive secretion is the default pathway of vesicular trafficking. What this means is that if a protein made in the endoplasmic reticulum loses its targeting molecule for whatever reason, it will automatically be excreted out of the cell. This explains why an eye cell disease which occurs due to loss of a targeting molecule which targets proteins to the lysosome, there are abnormally high amounts of lysosomal proteins in the bloodstream. These lysosomal proteins, instead of going to the lysosome, go down the default pathway, which is constitutive secretion. 
If you think about it, this kind of makes sense because you do not want proteins to accumulate in the cytosol. So if for whatever reason a targeting molecule is lost, the best option is to release the protein out of the cell where it can be degraded. Now that we are familiar with the different mechanisms involved in protein trafficking, let's talk about one specific type of protein trafficking which is extremely important for the USMLE Step 1. Protein targeting to the lysosome is very important because dysregulation of the system is the basis for eye cell disease, also known as mucolipidosis type 2. It also serves as a model for the mechanism of protein modification and trafficking. As we said before, proteins destined for the lysosome are made in endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes and undergo glycosylation to receive several mannose monomers. Mannose is a type of carbohydrate. In the Golgi, these mannose molecules are phosphorylated by the enzyme N-acetoglucosamine 1-phosphate transferase or GNPTA. What is important to know is that phosphorylated mannose is the signal molecule to target proteins to the lysosome. This is extremely important, so let's take a closer look at this process on the next slide. So first, a lysosomal protein is made in the endoplasmic reticulum. While still in the endoplasmic reticulum, this protein undergoes glycosylation to receive several mannose molecules. Next, the protein is sent via a vesicle to the Golgi. In the Golgi, the enzyme GNPTA identifies the mannose molecule and adds a phosphate group, or phosphorylates the mannose molecules. Vesicles going from the Golgi to the lysosomes contain receptors which bind phosphorylated mannose so that proteins with phosphorylated mannose molecules are packaged into these vesicles and sent to the ribosome. In eye cell disease, there is a mutation in the GNPTA gene, which renders GNPTA dysfunctional. Loss of GNPTA function means that mannose residues are not phosphorylated and the signal molecule for the lysosome is lost. This protein then undergoes the default pathway, which is constitutive secretion, and it is therefore secreted out of the cell via exocytosis. Eye cell disease is extremely rare. Only about 30 cases have been documented in the medical literature. It is characterized by profound mental disability, clouded corneas, coarse facial features, and hand deformities as well as skeletal deformities. The term coarse facial features is used to describe the appearance of many congenital disorders. What it means is simply exaggerated facial features, so for example, enlarged cheeks, enlarged chin, enlarged forehead, and enlarged nose. They'll also have an elongated face. Eye cell disease is diagnosed by decreased GMPTA enzyme activity in cells or increased concentration of lysosomal enzymes in blood. Lastly, let's talk about non-vesicular mediated trafficking. As we said before, there are two general pathways of protein trafficking which differ based on which ribosomes the proteins are made. Proteins that are made in cytosolic or free-floating ribosomes typically stay in the cell. These are usually proteins belonging to organelles or structures such as the nucleus, peroxisome, mitochondria, or cytosol. These proteins never enter vesicles and instead depend on special amino acid sequences that target the protein to its intended destination. For example, proteins destined for the mitochondria have special localization sequences which bind proteins already located on the surface of the mitochondria. So in summary, there are two main mechanisms of protein trafficking which depend on which ribosome the protein is made. Proteins made in the endoplasmic reticulum utilize vesicles for transport and can go to the Golgi, endoplasmic reticulum, lysosome, or plasma membrane. Vesicle-mediated trafficking involves the help of coat proteins called COP1, COP2, and clathrin. Iso disease is caused by loss of the lysosomal targeting molecule, phosphorylated mannose. Non-vesicular mediated trafficking requires amino acid sequences called localization sequences to target the protein to its destination. These proteins never enter vesicles and normally stay inside the cell. So that's it for protein trafficking and iso disease. Thank you for watching and see you on the next lecture.